it's crunch time for British transport. It's starting to hurt. Without fundamental improvement, Britain's overcrowded and overloaded transport network will do real damage to our competitiveness in the global economy. Sir Rod Eddington, asked by government to take a hard look at UK transport, said in 2005 that Britain's infrastructure has reached the point of no return. He sets it out starkly. We have real infrastructure issues in this country. We are competing with one hand tied behind our back. And it's not just nationally that it's hurting. Without improved transport, the regional economies of Scotland and the English North will fall further behind London and the South East. The fundamental importance of transport has been recognised. Government's Northern Way strategy for economic revival in the North sets it out very clearly. Regions prosper when they are well connected. World-class transport links are essential elements of competitive advantage. Ultraspeed is not merely world-class. Ultraspeed is world-beating, world-changing. Ultraspeed will transform the UK economy with rapid intercity transport that's faster, greener and more advanced than any competitor country worldwide. Ultraspeed will change the rules. With a journey of around an hour, Ultraspeed will be quicker from Heathrow to Manchester than a taxi from Heathrow to Westminster. With a journey of around 85 minutes, Heathrow to Teesside will be quicker than Heathrow to Canary Wharf on today's public transport. With journey times between 15 and 45 minutes, the entire north of England, from Merseyside to Tyneside, will be connected directly to Manchester Airport, creating a world-class air gateway in the north, for the north. And with a journey of less than 10 minutes, Liverpool and Manchester airports could be combined into a single three-runway super airport to drive northern economic growth, and all without building an inch of new runway. As project director Alan James puts it, Ultraspeed rebalances Britain. Ultraspeed is about spreading economic opportunity to all of Britain, to Scotland, the English Northeast, Yorkshire, the Northwest, the Midlands. And it's also about de-stressing overheating in London and the Southeast. It's about enabling all of Britain to shine in the global competition for investment, for jobs, for wealth creation. That's why Ultraspeed takes into account the key decision factors that inward investors look at when deciding where to make their investment access to the global economy, domestic transport, education and skills in the workforce, the availability of property, incentive deals, quality of life. Here's London, difficult property, few deals available, but great global access and pretty good city transport. The peripheral economies of the UK, by contrast, have poor transport links, but by the same token, property is readily available, deals are to be had and the quality of life is second to none. Across the board, the UK performs above most of the benchmarks, but it's in market access and transport that the regions are truly hindered. Here, ultraspeed changes the variables, increasing the speed and decreasing the time, altering the balance between centre and periphery, improving Britain's national competitiveness in the global economy and, by the same investment, reducing regional economic peripherality. Using Department of Transport value of time figures, Ultraspeed benefits Britain by over £2 billion a year in journey time savings alone. And that's before the similarly significant economic benefits of factors like congestion relief and pollution reduction have been included. Ultraspeed supports improved national competitiveness and balanced regional development in another way, by connecting Britain to its airports more seamlessly and more comprehensively than any other country. The Ultraspeed network will put most of Britain's population within 45 minutes of a major airport hub, either at Heathrow or Northern England's World Gateway at Manchester or at one of Scotland's main airports. In total, as many as seven UK airports could be connected directly to the network. Ultraspeed is faster than a jet over typical short-haul routes and is likely to replace many domestic air services. Aircraft on UK internal flights often spend more time taxiing and circling 
than actually traveling from A to B. But Ultraspeed just gets on with it. More than 800 seats departing every 10 minutes to a timetable defined precisely to the second. This creates transport capacity equivalent to 1,800 150-seater short-haul aircraft every day between London and Manchester. There are currently only 50 to 70 daily connections. And each ultraspeed service can stop at every major city en route, not just at one airport. There simply isn't an 840-seat plane that can fly in well under three hours from Glasgow to Edinburgh, to Newcastle, to Teesside, to Leeds, to Manchester, to Birmingham, and then on to Heathrow. Such an aircraft just does not exist. Neither does any kind of train capable of that performance. But Ultraspeed's trans-repeat system does exist. Now, already in daily service, conveying millions of passengers faster than any other ground transport on Earth, Ultraspeed changes the rules. Using Ultraspeed instead of short-haul aircraft will free up hundreds of precious runway slots at Heathrow and elsewhere which would then become available for long-haul aircraft. This is more efficient, more environmentally sustainable and more economically beneficial to Britain. Ultraspeed will operate in partnership with airlines and airports to deliver these benefits. The goal is for passengers to be able to check themselves and their luggage straight through from any Ultraspeed terminal to any city in the world which has an air connection from any of the UK airports on the Ultraspeed route. And what's good for passengers is also good for business. Transrapid has been designed to convey standard air freight containers, unloaded straight from the plane and delivered to any ultraspeed terminal within a couple of hours. This will give Britain the compelling advantage of the fastest and best integrated national distribution system in the world. And that will also remove millions of lorry miles from the motorways, especially when other high-speed, high-value freight such as mail and courier traffic transfers to ultraspeed. By slashing journey times, Ultraspeed not only transforms travel at an individual level, it also transforms investment, jobs and wealth creation. By joining places and joining people, Ultraspeed changes Britain. Both the English North and metropolitan Scotland become as accessible and as attractive for business as the Thames Valley is today. London's superb connections to the global financial network are complemented by world-class connections to the UK's major cities. The result? The numbers are conclusive. Initial studies measured the key city regions of Scotland and the north of England against the overall macroeconomic power of London. With Ultraspeed, Greater Manchester, West Yorkshire and Tyneside more than double in economic power. For the first time in over a century, a reinvigorated north becomes a true alternative to London. In Scotland, the effects are just as profound. Edinburgh goes from 14th to 8th place amongst Britain's regional economies and Glasgow leaps from less than a fifth of London's economic power to nearly half. In short, ultraspeed rebalances Britain. As independent economists put it, ultraspeed creates the very real possibility of a major realignment in the UK's economic geography. By, as they put it, reducing the friction of distance to around a third of its previous level, ultraspeed overcomes the north-south divide. Ultraspeed empowers the most profound shift in UK economic geography since the coming of the railways. The most important investment in infrastructure since the Victorians' road-changing technology reshaped the country in the 19th century. Yes, Ultraspeed is a big vision. But Britain has a pretty good track record in transforming vision into reality. Our Victorian predecessors show us the way. Now, our children look to us to build for them a Britain once again at the forefront of progress. The world first in Shanghai proves that the Transrapid system works. Ultraspeed will make it work for Britain.